Well, in this video lecture, we are going to discuss the profit maximization in a competitive market. Okay, as we know that revenue of the firm this is equal to price time quantity, and cost of the firm is also equal to price time quantity. But it should be noted that this P is the price of output. Output price multiplied by the units of output, you get total revenue. And this is the price of input. Input time, output units produced. This is equal to total cost of the firms. All right. Uh, now, how the prices of output and how the prices of inputs are determined in competitive market? In competitive markets, they cannot be unilaterally determined by the producers or the consumers. Rather. They are determined by the interaction of the producers and uh, consumers bargaining, which is also known as the demand and supply forces. So, because of technological constraints and because of market constraints, the producers cannot determine these prices unilaterally. Okay, what do we mean by technological constraints? By technological constraints, we mean that all the production uh, plans in the production possibility sets are not feasible. So it means that some of them are feasible and some of them are not feasible. So the production will be done subject to those production plans which are technologically feasible. Okay, And similarly, the market constraints comes up when we talk about the buyers and sellers. So, only specific prices will be acceptable to buyers and similarly, only specific prices will be accept acceptable to the sellers. So, the interaction of buyers and sellers determines the market price both in the goods market as well as in the input markets. All right. Uh, now, the profit function can be reported as Profit is a function of prices. It is equal to maximizing P time Y. Now, how profit depends upon prices? As we know that profit is equal to total revenue minus total cost. If you represent output by Y, then this is equal to P into Y minus P into Y. So you can report this P and this P. This is the P, the price of output. This is the price of input. You can uh, uh, represent it by simply P, and P is common between the two. So that's why this is P Y. So that's why your profit is a function of prices. These prices. This is the vector of prices, which contains both the input prices as well as the output prices. So the maximum profit from the uh, maximizing the difference between the total revenue and the total cost such that y is the subset of y it means that this production plan is feasible it belongs to the production possibility set when it what do we mean by this it means that in the universal production possibility set this production possibility plan is technologically feasible. All right. Now, maximization of the profit also means that minimization of the cost. So you can uh, report the same phenomena, profit maximization. It can be reported in term of minimization of cost. The same thing can be reported as in term of cost function which is equal to maximum profit means minimum cost here the production possibility plan belongs to the production possibility set here the input bundles is the subset of the input requirement set viva is what this is the input requirement set to produce this much output or for this much production possibility plan so this y and this y are similar right so, profit maximization means cost minimization. 
and it may assume so many variants from for example look at the following variants of the profit maximization or cost minimization look at the first one this profit function represents the short run production and the short run profit function because this time profit is the function of prices as well as z what is z z is the vector of restrictions this is the vector of restrictions and restriction exists only in the short run so that's why this is the short run profit function the short run profit function is equal to maximization of p into y such that this y this time does not belong to uh, the y it belongs to y but it belongs to the short run production possibility set but what is important to note that short run production possibility set is the subset of the universal set as well right because the production possibility set consists of a short run production possibility set the long run production possibility set all types of production possibility sets but this time since we are talking about the short run so that's why the production possibility plan it is the subset of the short run production possibility set okay in if you report the same thing in term of cost minimization it can be reported as cost is a function of w which is the vector of input prices right and this is the output or production possibility plan in the short run and z is the short run restriction this is equal to minimization of cost this is total cost total cost is equal to input price factor multiplied by vector of factor inputs if you multiply these two vectors you get the total cost of the uh, firm so minim minimizing this total cost such that y minus 1 it is the subset of the production possibility sets of the short run so what is this this is the short run production plan where for this much level of output you need this vector of factor inputs the negative sign represents that this is the vector input it belongs to the short run production possibility set the second variant of the profit function can be uh, a single output profit function look at this one profit is the function of prices and prices this is price of output this is single price right and this is also this is the price vector but this is these the w shows the prices of the uh, vector of inputs so this is the maximization of the difference of total revenue and total cost this time you can see this is the price of single output this shows the production of single output but for the single output you you need a vector of inputs because for a single output you need land labor capital organization etc and this shows the prices of land labor capital and organization so this represents total cost and this is the single output so multiplication of the price time output this is total revenue this is total cost and the difference between total revenue and total cost results into the profit of the function so maximization of the profit function for a single output can be reported by this equation so this is again the profit function now starting with the uh, optimization of the profit function okay so we are taking the single output case right where the firm is producing single output right and uh, production of single output requires a vector of inputs bundle okay so this is the total revenue of the firm and this is total cost of the firm you have to apply the first order condition if you apply the first order conditions you take the first order derivative of the profit function and you put it equal to zero right so you can factor the p out because this is constant right and you can take the derivative of this production function note that this x is a vector of inputs right you take the derivative with respect to x1 with respect to x2 with respect to x2 up with respect to x i where i takes a value from uh, 1 up to n 
where n is the number of uh, vectors which is used in the production of y. Okay, so you can take so many derivatives over here. In all these derivatives, when you take the derivative of production function with respect to x1, you get the modern physical product of x1. When you take the derivative of this with respect to x2, you get the marginal physical product of x2. But when you multiply the marginal physical product with the price, you get marginal revenue. When you multiply the marginal physical product with price, you get the marginal revenue. And when you take the derivative of this, you can factor the input prices output and you can take the derivative of again this input bundle with respect to x i with respect to x1 with respect to x2 with respect to x2. If you are taking the derivative of this with respect to x1, so you have also to take the derivative of this with respect to x1. So it will result into marginal revenue and this is the marginal cost. So the first other condition reveals that marginal revenue must equal to the marginal cost of the Firm. This is the first other condition and it means the marginal principle. The marginal principle means that the marginal benefits must be equal to the marginal cost. Overall all these derivatives can be reported in term of gradient. What is this D? This D represents the gradient vector of derivatives, right? So, it covers all possible derivatives that is with this derivative with respect to x1, with respect to x2, with respect to x3, up to so on with respect to x1. All these derivatives can be reported or can be presented as d f of x steric. So, it is a vector of all possible first other derivatives. So, p time all derivatives this is equal to w. This shows the 